So you have a bag full of bits of paper with numbers written on them and you don't know how many bits of paper there are in your bag. So you go in your bag and you get a number out and you get the number two dozen six. By the way, this is in duodecimal. Okay, right. Now, I estimate from that that that's about halfway through. Now, two dozen six is... 30. So I estimate that there are 60 numbers in there in the bag. Let's try that again. Get another number out, and it's one gross and eight. So I estimate from that. Imagine it's about halfway through. So it's about two gross plus 16, which is 300 odd. Okay. So maybe it's between those two somewhere. Okay. Right. So now I empty the bag out into here and see how many numbers there actually are. And there are in fact that many, which is 152. So none of those are particularly good estimates, but they were sort of in the right ballpark, roughly. That is what the doomsday argument is about. What it means is, Given that my life is a random sample of the history of the human race, where am I likely to be? And the most likely point would be that you're about halfway through the examples of possible human beings there will ever be. We do know some things about the history of the human race. For example, we know or are fairly confident that there have been approximately 100 billion human beings. Therefore, it seems fair to assume that there will be about 100 billion more human beings before we all die and become extinct. If that's the case, assuming that population doubles every 30 years, which is what it has been doing and quite recently, we can assume that if we're halfway through, the human race will become extinct in about 120 years time and therefore that if the oldest human being ever to live will be about 120 years old, which is how it seems, that human being is alive today as a baby. That's how the doomsday argument works. It means that you can supposedly predict with 95% confidence where we are in the history of the human race. And because population is increasing, we are much more likely to be towards the end than at the beginning because our life is at some random point in the history of the human race. And it's much more likely to be at a point where there are a lot of people and then the population completely disappears than it is to be in the long string that led up to that where there are just a few people. Now, there are flaws with that argument, quite a lot of them actually, and I want to go into those. First of all, it assumes that we won't become immortal, because then the last human beings will just be people who live a very long time. It assumes that nothing will change the human race such that we will stop thinking in this way. For example, we might start having a cyclical view on the whole. It assumes that people have always thought in the same way. And it also assumes that there isn't a population crash followed by a very long tail of a few, for a few human beings who go on for millions of years. So all of those taken together, it doesn't really seem to work. There's other things as well. Most people are probably babies who die young and therefore don't have that thought at all. So is it more of a prediction of the number of people who are likely to think this? And maybe at the end of the period when there are people who are likely to think that? Or suppose there's either a drop or a boost in general human intelligence such that we realise this argument is wrong or we don't understand the argument and as a result people don't have that thought. What if that happens? So those are the basic arguments. I was actually going to talk about October catastrophe theory and population bottlenecks at this point but I've run out of time so I'm afraid that's going to have to be for another time. But basically that's the doomsday argument that it goes up like that and then it reaches the peak and we're towards the peak because that's when the most human beings are. I don't think it works, but that's what I was talking about in that poke video. See you tomorrow.